Hello, I am Ankita Tiwari, research scholar pursuing PhD from Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. H. S. Gore University, Sagar, with an interesting and learning episode of antitussive agents, including introduction to antitussive agents, centrally acting antitussives, opium alkaloids and their modifications, synthetic antitussives, peripherally acting antitussives and expectorants, which is one of the important units of section of B Farm fifth semester. This presentation is prepared by Dr. Sunil K. Jain, Professor and Director, Adina Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and Muhammad Hashim Mansouri, Associate Professor, Adina Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Sagar. Let us start our episode while taking a look at what we are going to learn today. Module 1 Introduction to Treatment of Cuff, Expectorants, Antitussives. Module 2 Peripherally Acting Antitussives. Module 3 Centrally Acting Antitussives. Module 4 Opium Alkaloids and Their Modifications. Module 5 Synthetic Antitussives. Let's start with general introduction about cuff and its treatment. Module 1 Introduction to Treatment of Cuff. Cuff is a protective physiological reflex by which foreign substances, irritants or obstructive material and mucus are discharged from the respiratory tract. It is very extensive and commonly ignored as a mild symptom. Cuff is a useful physiological mechanism that serves to clear the respiratory passages of foreign material as well as excess secretions and should not be suppressed indiscriminately. Although cuff is a valuable physiological function, but if it becomes too severe or too frequent or non-reproductive with pain and fatigue, then it should be controlled. Mechanism of cuff production. The cuff reflex is complex phenomenon involving the central nervous system that is CNS, peripheral nervous system that is PNS and smooth muscles of bronchial tree. It involves following events. The cuff receptors lie in the mucosa of the bronchial tree. Afferent conduction of impulses from these receptors via the vagus nerve, the central afferent impulses pass to the medulla. Then an autonomic sequence of events is triggered by medulla which results in cuff. Types of cuff. The cuff can be categorized in different types. First, productive cuff that is cuff with excessive secretions. Second, non-productive cuff that is cuff with no secretions that is dry cuff. Further, on the basis of duration, characters, quality and timing, the cuff may be acute which is sudden onset or less than 3 weeks, subacute that is 3 to 8 weeks or chronic longer than 8 weeks. In such cases, the physician recommends the use of antitussives and expectorants. These agents are used in the symptomatic control of cuff and act by depressing the cuff center located in the medulla as well as affect various regions of the trachea bronchial tree. Now, we take a short review of expectorant, then we will focus on antitussives. Expectorant. The word expectorant is derived from Latin word expectorare, which means to expel from the chest. An expectorant works by signaling the body to increase the production of respiratory fluid that cover and protect the irritated mucosa and facilitate the removal of respiratory tract secretions by coughing. Expectorants, more accurately known as bronchomucotropic agents, are drugs which assist in the removal of secretions or exudates from the trachea, bronchi or lungs. They act by liquefying viscid mucus or mucopurulent exudates. In other words, these are decongestants. Therefore, these are used in the treatment of cough by expelling the exudates and secretions. Expectorants can be divided into groups like sedative expectorants and stimulant expectorants. Sedative expectorants. The drugs of this group help specifically in the secretion of a protective mucus film which covers up inflamed membranes and increases the efficiency of the removal of slimy exudates by coughing. Sedative expectorants may further subdivide it into three different classes. First, saline expectorants. They are used to soothe the inflamed respiratory mucosa by stimulating the secretion of protective mucosa. 
that is by its secretory cells of the respiratory airway. So increasing the fluidity of sputum and help expectoration by cuff. Example, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, potassium citrate, potassium acetate, ammonium chloride, etc. Second is nauseant expectorants. These act as expectorants in small doses and nauseant and emetic in large doses. Example, tartar emetic, epicac, etc. Third is demulcent expectorants. These agents are normally mucilaginous in nature and serve to coat and protect the mucous membrane of the upper respiratory tract. Example is licorice, tolu balsam, vasaka, etc. Few examples belonging to sedative expectorants are first, sodium and potassium citrate are considered to increase bronchial secretion by salt action. Second, potassium iodide is secreted by bronchial glands and can irritate the airway mucosa. Prolonged use can affect thyroid function and produce iodism. Now it is rarely used. Third, guafenesin, vasaka, tolu balsam are plant products which are supposed to enhance bronchial secretion and mucociliary function. Fourth, acetylcysteine. It can be synthesized by carrying out the direct acetylation of naturally occurring L-cysteine. Uses Acetylcysteine reduces the viscosity of pulmonary secretions. Lowering of viscosity of the mucus may be due to the opening of the disulfide bond present in the sulfhydryl moiety in the mucus medium. Usually, it is incorporated as an adjuvant in the preparations meant for bronchopulmonary disorders when mucolysis is required. Stimulant, that is irritant expectorants. They stimulate healing and repairing of chronically inflamed respiratory mucosa, decrease the amount of sputum and sputum loses its objectionable udder. Example, terpene hydrate, guafenesin that is robitacin. Guafenesin, for the synthesis of guafenesin, guaicol is used as a starting material. Action and uses. Guafenesin is an expectorant. It may be useful in the symptomatic relief of dry, non-productive cuffs and in the presence of mucus in the respiratory tract. Usual dose. It is 5 to 20 ml at every 4 to 6 hours. Now we will focus on antitussives. Antitussives are the drugs which are used in the treatment of dry cuff by suppressing it that is reduce the input of stimuli arising from pharynx, larynx and trachea. The cuff reflex is complex involving the central and peripheral nervous systems and the smooth muscle of the bronchial tree. It has been suggested that irritation of the bronchial mucosa causes bronchoconstriction which in turn stimulates cuff receptors that is special type of stretch receptor located in tracheobronchial passages. Several compounds have been synthesized that possess antitussive activity without the addiction problem as seen in the narcotic agents. Along with other ingredients, many cough preparations containing antitussive agent including antihistaminics which are when cause of the cough is allergy. Some antihistamine drugs like diphenhydramine have both central antitussive as well as sympathomimetic actions. Antitussives specifically inhibit or suppress the action of medullary center or associated higher centers by increasing the threshold of the cough center. Interrupting of peripheral impulses in the respiratory tract and inhibiting the conduction of impulses along the motor pathways. Classification of antitussives. The antitussives can be classified as first peripheral antitussives. They have soothing effect on the irritant mucous membrane, example liquorice, steam inhalation of benzoin tincture, composite, and menthol. Second, central antitussives. They inhibit the cuff center and may be narcotics or non-narcotics. A. Narcotic antitussives. Examples are hydrocodone, morphine, hydromorphone, methadone and levofenone. Codeine and morphine have antitussive, analgesic, euphoric, respiratory center depression and dependence activity. Folcodine and hydrocodone have weak addictive, analgesic, euphoric, and respiratory center depression activity. Morphine and related opioids depress the cuff reflex at least partly by direct action on a cuff center in the medulla. 
there is no obligatory relationship between depressions of respiration and depressions of coughing. Some available antitussive agents do not depress the respiration. Suppression of cough by such agents appears to involve receptors in the medulla that are less sensitive to naloxone than those responsible for analgesia. B. Non-narcotic antitussives like noscapine and dextromethorphan devoid of analgesic effect, dependence, euphoria and respiratory center depression. Dextromethorphan that is D3-methoxy N-methylmorphinin is the dextroisomer of the codeine analog. Methorphan, unlike the levoisomer, it has no analgesic or addictive properties and does not act through opioid receptors, it centrally elevates the threshold for coughing. Its potency is nearly equal to that of codeine, but it produces fewer subjective and gastrointestinal side effects. In therapeutic doses, the drug does not inhibit ciliary activity and its antitussive effects persist for 5 to 6 hours. Its toxicity is low, but extremely high doses may produce CNS depression. Third is central and peripheral antitussives. They suppress cough center by inhibiting the pulmonary stretch receptors, example, benzonitate, which is related to the local anesthetic tetrakine. It anesthetizes the stretch receptors in the lungs, thereby reduces coughing. Adverse reactions include hypersensitivity, sedation, dizziness, and nausea. Dear friends, till now you have gained a complete idea about antitussive agents, centrally acting antitussives, opium alkaloids, and their modifications, synthetic antitussives, peripherally acting antitussives, and expectorants. If you have missed any of the module or content, you may log on to our website that is www.cec.nic.in to download the videos, FAQs, LOR and other contents so that you can remain updated with this chapter. Now let's move ahead to our next module that is about peripherally acting antitussives. Module 2 Peripherally acting antitussives Peripherally acting antitussives act through inhibition of cuff receptor or pulmonary stretch receptor. The anti-cuff effects can be achieved by the inhibition of cuff receptor of pharynx, which is by the use of demulcent and soothing pastils and gargles, larynx by the use of emollient and soothing spray of menthol and eucalyptus, tracheobronchial airway by the use of inhalation of hot steam medicated with benzoin tincture. According to the way of exerting antitussive action, these agents can be grouped into the following classes. First, inhibition of peripheral cuff receptors. This class includes several local anesthetics or related drugs. The prototype is benzonitate, which is also a central antitussive, but other related compounds like aloclamide, oxalamine and prenoxtiazine act in the same way. Benzonitate, chemically related to the local anesthetic tetracaine, was a result of planned search for more specific antitussive agents based on the rationale that they could be found among compounds having a local anesthetic moiety combined with a substance having selective affinity for myelin. Benzonitate restrains cough center through pulmonary stretch receptors. It anesthetizes the stretch receptors in the lungs, thereby reducing coughing. Adverse effects include hypersensitivity, sedation, dizziness and nausea. Second, demulcents. Demulcents, also called emollients, are substances that act by protectively coating the irritated mucosa and by stimulating the production of saliva and very likely by exerting a mild anesthetic action. They are used mostly as vehicles for the more specific antitussives. Examples of demulcents include acacia, glycerine, glycerizin and honey. Third is mucolytics. Mucolytic agents have been useful as antitussives because in irritative states there is an increase in concentration of mucoproteins and mucopolysaccharides which are the main constituents of normal respiratory tract secretions. Apart from these, some other agents also work as antitussive agents like A. Detergents, example polysorbate, enzyme, example chymotrypsin, pancreatic dornase and trypsin. 
cysteine derivatives example acetylcysteine nisocysteine and prenistine miscellaneous agents example adamexine ambroxol amifostin bromhexine saline solution of water etc module 3 centrally acting antitussives these drugs reduce cough as a result of their central action they depress the area of the cns which controls the cough reflex they are mainly useful in the symptomatic relief of dry irritant type of cough they may be narcotics or non narcotics opium alkaloids morphine codeine derivatives of opium alkaloids for example folcodeine ethyl morphine or noscapine synthetic morphine substitutes example dextromethorphan levoproxifene non opioid synthetics for example ketamine dimethoxanate chlorpheridinol module 4 opium alkaloids and their modifications the naturally occurring alkaloids in opium with antitussive activity are codeine that is antitussive of choice morphine mostly used as analgesic and noscapine that is tuscapine codeine it is an alkaloid that occurs naturally in opium codeine chemically codeine is 7,8 di dehydro 4,5 epoxy 3 methoxy 17 methyl morphinan 6 all synthesis codeine is an alkaloid obtained from opium 0.7 to 2.5% or prepared by methylating the hydroxyl group of morphine with methyl iodide in potassium hydroxide properties codeine occurs as odorless colorless crystalline powder it is levorotatory compound and is slightly soluble in water it should be kept in a well closed light resistant container it is also available as colorless water soluble hydrochlorite or phosphate salts mechanism of action codeine acts by the inhibition of cns medulla mediated cuff reflex uses codeine has been used for pain relief and suppression of cuff codeine has a reputation as an antitussive depressing the cuff reflex and is used in many cuff preparations it is one of the most widely used morphine like analgesics and less addicting than morphine 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 is obtained only from the opium poppy papaver somniferum either from opium pot or from poppy straw the free alkaloid occurs as levorotatory odorless white needle like crystals possessing a bitter taste it is almost insoluble in water at the boiling point ether or chloroform it is somewhat more soluble in ethyl alcohol it shows potent analgesic activity towards all types of pain and causes addiction so readily it controls pain caused by serious injury neoplasms migraine pleurisy biliary renal colic and numerous other conditions module 5 synthetic antitussives dextromethorphan it is a synthetically produced substance that is related to codeine chemically it is 3 methoxy 17 methyl 9 alpha 13 alpha 14 alpha morphinan it has central cuff suppressant action but it does not show the untoward effects of opioids its metabolism is genetically polymorphous similar to the codeine metabolism according to more recent studies performed predominantly on animals it has anti epileptic neuroprotective and anti parkinsonian properties properties it is white colored odorless solid crystals or solid powder it is soluble in water 1.5 g per 100 ml soluble 1 in 10 of ethanol freely soluble in chloroform and practically insoluble in ether it should be preserved in air tight and light resistant containers uses it is used in cough or cold preparations as an antitussive not with expectorant benzonitate structurally benzonitate is related to tetracaine it is a non opioid synthetic antitussive drug benzonitate anesthetizes the stretch receptors in the respiratory areas dampening their activity reducing cough reflex noscapine it is a thalate isoquinoline alkaloid obtained from plants of the papaver genus of family papaveraceae chemically it is 3s 67 dimethoxy 3 5r 5678 tetrahydro 4 methoxy 
सिक्स मिथाइल वन थ्री डायऑक्सोलो फोर फाइव जी आइजोक्विनोलिन फाइव आइल थेलाइट मोनोहाइड्रोक्लोराइड हाइड्रेट नोस्केपीन इज एन एंटीटसिव एजेंट एक्टिंग ऑन सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम इट ऑल्सो पजेसिस वीक ब्रोंकोडायलेटर प्रॉपर्टीज नोस्केपीन लैक्स एडिक्टिव एनालजेसिक रेस्पिरेटरी डिप्रेसेंट एंड सेडिटिव प्रॉपर्टीज कैरामीफेन it is a non opioid synthetic antitussive agent caramifen is less active than codeine but has longer duration of action caramifen can be synthesized from phenyl acetonitrile as phenyl acetonitrile on double alkylation with 1,4 dibromobutane gives substituted cyclopentane derivative which on hydrolysis with alkali followed by treatment with thionyl chloride provides acid chloride derivative and condensation of acid chloride derivative with diethyl amino ethanol gives caramifen summary cough is one of the most common symptoms encountered in clinical practice there are many over the counter combination syrups available for the management of cough these are the mainstay of therapy in case of non specific cough and may act as adjuvant in addition to treatment of the specific cause in case of cough associated with other conditions Since a long time expectorants and antitussives have been used in the management of cough with certain benefits in this module we have taken a look at the commonly found antitussives and expectorants along with their synthesis with all these information here we come to the end of today's lecture to keep in mind what we have discussed today this is time for your self study if you want to learn more for enhancing your knowledge you may log on to our website which is www.cec.nic.in for mcq quiz and lors till then keep studying goodbye